you don't go through that uh, with a halo. You know, you, the important thing is you get through it. Ted grew up in Arizona, tall, skinny, and anything but a sex symbol. My sister laughs and chuckles whenever she hears this sex stuff talk. You know, she thinks that's the funniest thing, remembering, you know, mm -hmm. all my traumas growing up. Ted says his childhood was packed with playful memories. We caught up with him on the set of his latest film, A Fine Mess, where he's still at play. He looks like a guy who's never known sorrow. But, of course, appearances can be deceiving. How did you meet Casey? I met her in New York City. Um, and we wooed for about six months, got married, and then moved out here. Well, it sounds like it was really a love at first sight. Yeah, oh, it was. Boy, we talked, you know, we met, passed her out to dinner, and we talked until four in the morning. It was like, it was almost as if it was, you know, she was saying, this is what I want in my life. And I was going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's good, that's good, that's good. Because almost everything that we have now, we talked about, you know, wanting and, from that night on, it was like we were constant companions. Constant companion is a phrase Ted Danson can appreciate, because at one point, he almost lost Casey. Mm, my wife, Casey, had a stroke, massive stroke, uh, during delivery of Kate, our first child, and it took her about, she didn't move for like three weeks. I mean, it was big, 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 big. Paralyzed. Deal. Yeah. Didn't move at all. And her left side, like you could draw a line down her body, it was like, was not there. And it took her three months in the hospital to be able to just get home. And about two and a half years of working out every day with therapists and everything. And oh, it, was, it was a horror story at the time. It was really, it was rough. But it was also miraculous that she, uh, that she was walking and, and, and you know, because the doctor said she will maybe walk, definitely won't have the use of an arm. And I was like, ah. What a shock. Yeah, and that was incorrect. And you had to be very supportive during that time. Uh-huh. I bet you were angry. Yep, all that stuff. I know. It's like people, you know, it's like, you don't go through that uh, with a halo. You know, you, the important thing is you get through it and through the other side and, and as a couple, you know, but it's not like you come through clean as a whistle. There was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, the funny thing, one of the, we try to go to a movie like four or five, six months after it, even a year after it happened. We'd, go out together and pull into the parking lot of the movie and have these outrageous fights, never get to the movie at all, just trying to clean up all of the, the angers and the fears and all of the stuff that got suppressed when you were handling the emergency itself. Because you know? her, you know, her, her, hers was, where were you? you know, there was this huge breaking of trust. Mine was, you, you know, you almost died. You, know? you said forever and ever, you know, this, this marriage was forever and ever. And you almost died. You're not trustworthy anymore. It sounds weird. And you have a beautiful little girl, and then beautiful you adopted girl. another mm -hmm. one? Yeah, Alexis. Beautiful little girl. Yeah, we're very lucky. Yeah. You like being a daddy, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, all, on, all on its own, I like being a daddy. Plus, being in Hollywood, it's kind of nice to have roots, and nice to have something that uh, means more than what you do out there.